You know, I enjoyed our Sunday school lesson. I enjoyed whenever we get in. You know, uh, sometimes, sometimes I think people think I'm a little on the deep end. Whenever I get to speaking about God, and we get to talking about Jesus Christ and and what He is, and uh, you know, the uh, Sister Helen was, was speaking there a while ago about the name of Jesus and how that, uh, see, there, there is power in the name. Amen. In the name of Jesus. There is power in that name. <coughs> now, we, we have to gather that power spiritually within us to understand the power that is in that name. I, uh, so many times, you know, they, they wanted to, they wanted to stone him because he told them who he was. He, he told them in a roundabout way, I, I'm, I'm God, I'm him. And, and, and so many times people, people said, well, he's a blasphemer. He's calling himself God. First thing they wanted to do was stone him. But we know today and here we are, we're, we're way down the road from whenever he walked the face of the earth, whenever he came around and, uh, and began to do the miracles that he done and the things that he done. We're, we're still grasping. We're still grasping today. We're still grasping for the understanding of God. We're still grasping. We're still... We're still trying to get a hold of everything. And if you're a Christian, if you're a believer in Christ, then that's what you're going to be doing. That's what you're going to be doing. You're going to try, be trying, trying to, like, like uh, Sister Helen made the comment this morning, whenever, whenever the, she gave her heart to the Lord, Sister Helen, you wanted to know everything you could know about Him. That's the way I was. That is, as far as going to heaven, yeah, I want to go to heaven. I know that I know that whenever that if I if I hold on and I, I stay stay faithful to him, I know that's my promise. That I'm going to heaven. He promised that for me. But I want to know everything I can know about him. Now I, if you got your Bibles this morning, I won't hold you very long this morning. And our Sunday school went over, which I enjoyed every bit of that. And uh, but if you've got your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Luke in the fourth chapter, just for a little bit. And uh, in the 16th verse, I, we're going to start reading there just for a little bit, and then, then y'all stay, stay with me. It says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the seventh day, and stood up for to read. And there delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place which it was written. Now here's what, did you hear what it said? Which it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captive and recovery of the blind, of the sight of the blind, to, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. <coughs> He's telling them right there, just as plain as he can. He's telling them, here's what I've come to do. I've come to be the God that I am. Now you're looking at me in flesh, and I'm here in the flesh. I'm here in the flesh. Now listen to what he said. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. I got 
listen to what's happening. God is waking the people up. He's coming out in the synagogue and he's taking those scriptures and he said, look here. Here, listen to what's happening. Today, when you look at me, you're looking at the God. You're looking at God. You're looking at Him. You're looking at the one that is going to come and here's what I'm fixing to do. He said, he said, I, this, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Whenever he read it, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he said, and listen to this, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has anointed me. The God has anointed me, and here I am standing in front of you. Now, we were talking this morning, and we were talking about the different events that had happened in the Bible. We were talking about... About Elijah, how that whenever Jesus, whenever he went to to the to the to the cave where Lazarus was buried, and how that whenever he he had tarried, whenever they thought if he'd have just been here, I'm, I'm paraphrasing now. If the Lord had just been here at the time, Lazarus wouldn't have been dead. He wouldn't have been in that grave. He wouldn't have been. It wouldn't make didn't make Jesus a bit of difference on what time it was. Whether he made it on time or not, it didn't make no difference. The thing that it made the difference was that, that he was going to show people that who he was and how that he had the power within him to do the things that he was fixing to do. Amen. I began to see him as, as he began to, to stand up in front of that, uh, that uh, old cave whenever he asked me. He said, he said show me where you laid him. He didn't have to have him to show him where he lay. He knew where he was laid. But he said, you show me where it is that you've laid him. And whenever they began to tell him, said, well, Lord, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we can show you where it was at. Uh, but God, uh, is, uh, he's been dead for a day. They began to say, but look out. He's been dead uh, for four days. Uh, and by now, he's already stinking. Remorse is set in. He's already stinking. And if we open that stone back, it's going to be awful. But see, he knew who he was. Just like he was talking in the scriptures right here. He said, listen to me. You want to know me? Listen to what I've got to say. Listen to what he said. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. I'm talking about God. I'm talking about he, he, he picked up the book of Isaiah and he began to read it. He said, here I am. Now this day, this day, while that you sat here in this congregation, he said, listen to what happened. You have heard what is fixing to take place. How that I am God, how I'm fixing to move. He said, to preach the deliverance to the captive, the recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. In other words, he'd come to be God to us. Here we are 2,000 years down the road from the time that he stood up in that morning and he began to read that scripture in that, in that synagogue. He began to read it and he began to tell them, you know, you got to listen to what I'm trying to tell you. And even today, you know, whenever that the, the Spirit of God begins to move in a building or, or the Spirit of God begins to come into the congregation where that we are, and, and we, begin to, we begin to say, God, I want to know everything that I can know about you. I want to know the feeling that I'm going to feel uh, whenever your Spirit begins to hover into this place, uh, whenever you begin to feel the power of God, uh, when it begins to move, uh, there's a mystery that begins to take place. Uh, there's a mystery that begins to form up in our minds. Uh, and we begin to say, God, will you give me the understanding? Uh, will you give me the understanding of you? Uh, will you show me how it is that I'm supposed to be? It begins to make us begin to work to, uh, to the place that we want to be just like Him. Have you ever thought about trying to be as close to like God as you possibly can? Have you ever thought about, how, you know, a lot of people today, we, we live in a, in a, in a fast-paced world today, and we don't have our minds set on God or on anything else 
hardly anymore. You cannot hardly keep to your mind, uh, you know, uh, the jobs uh, that are going today. Uh, I know my wife, I know how she works, and she works in a factory, and, and, uh, and I know that uh, a lot of the things that she does, and, uh, and it's high tech, it, uh, it's uh, over the computer, it's how it's worked out over the computer, how that they, uh, they communicate through the computers, and how that all the product and everything that is put out because that somebody has the understanding and how that got how that that the thing works we should be in the same category we should be trying to find out everything about this Jesus Christ that we preach about that we talk about we should be able to say God I want to know every little detail about you so that the next event that comes up in my life you're going to be able to work in it. Listen to this. I'm going back again. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Jesus. He's standing in the synagogue. And he's preaching. This is a high-tech God that I'm talking about this morning. I want to tell you one that knows more about the computer than me and you can even imagine. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Here's what I've been telling you this morning. Here's how that thing begins to work. Here's how God begins to work. Here's how the high-tech God begins to work. He said he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. I mean, now see, here we go. We're talking about a high-tech God now. Somebody that can do something for you that no machine can even think about doing. Somebody that can heal a broken heart. How many times have you went through life and you just and you, you go through something in your life and you would give anything if you had somebody that you could sit down to and talk to about a certain situation or a problem that was in your life, something that had tore your heart out of you, and you would give anything if you could just sit down to somebody and begin to talk to them about something. But there was nobody there that you could talk to. He said, here I am. I'm come. I'm here. He said, I'm here. Listen to me. He said, now I'm fixing to do something for you that the machine can't do. I'm fixing to do something for you the computer can't do. I'm fixing to do something for you that the high tech something, no matter where it is, it can't do nothing for you. That broken heart that you got, uh, he said, you know what I'm fixing to do? I'm fixing to ascend. Uh, the Holy Ghost power of God is fixing to come. Uh, and whenever it comes upon you, uh, that broken heart uh, that nobody could give you the words for, that broken heart that nobody could do anything with, uh, you know what I'm fixing to do? I'm fixing to take that broken heart. I'm fixing to heal it. Uh, I'm going to put it to the side, uh, and we're going to forget about it. To preach deliverance to the captain. To preach deliverance to the captain. How many times have you come to church and you just say, I just don't think I can make it another day? Have you ever done that? I don't think I can live for the Lord much longer. I've done everything that I know to do. It seems like I just get worse and worse and worse. You're in captivity. You're in captivity. You, you, you let yourself, let the devil get you in captivity. You're in the situation, but you don't seem to know what to do about it. You may go talk to your friend, and they may tell you something, but it's not going to give you what you need. But whenever you go to the Lord, He just stops to tell you, here's what I'm fixing to do for you. Whenever you go to God and you start saying, God, I need some help here. I need you to do something for me. I feel like I am so bound, I don't know what to do. And you begin to, you begin to pray, and the Spirit of the Lord begins to move. Amen. And God begins to move in the building where you're at. And all of a sudden, you don't know where He came from. You have no earthly ideal, but you know it was God. You don't know where He came from, but all of a sudden, the deliverance come to the captivity. 
them that was taken captive, all of a sudden, deliverance begins to come. All of a sudden, you don't know how it come, how it got there, but that thing that was tormenting you, that had you bound, all of a sudden, it seemed to be gone. I'm talking about God this morning. I'm talking about when he picked up the scripture and he began to read. He said, here's what I'm fixing to do. Here's what I'm fixing to do for you. And recovery of the sight to the blind. And the recovery of the sight to the blind. See, there was a man in the Bible that was blind. Couldn't see a thing, was that way from his mother's womb. And one day, two people went walking into the, into the synagogue. Peter and John they knew where the delivery from the blind was coming from. They knew how that God was fixing to heal the blind. It was coming. To set at liberty them that are bruised. You know, a lot of people in church today, there's a lot of people that come to church today and there's a lot of people <coughs> that has managed to get over a lot of situations where they were hurt in church. You know, I said this, I said this when I come to church. I said, you know who I want to come in, who I want in my church? I want people that has been hurt. That's who I want in my church. I want people that has been been out there and, and, and has been broken, as their hearts has been broken. I want them to come into this church. Amen. I want them that that has went to churches and people have said things that has hurt them. I want them to come to this church. Amen. I want them to come in. You know why I want them to come in? <laughs> because he said this to set at liberty them <coughs> that are bruised. I want to be able to preach the Word of God to you. I want to tell you about God, and I want, that's all I'm going to tell you about. I'm not going to tell you about other situations. I just want you to know that God is the one that can deliver you from all of these things that I've been talking about this morning. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now listen to this. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. It has happened. This is what I'm telling you. It has happened. God has made this thing come to pass. Now whenever we get to the understanding that we know that it's God that can take care of these things that we're going through, then all we got to do is accept what it is. This is an acceptable year of the Lord. Right now is the time that all we got to do is believe that God has come for all these things that I've been telling you about this morning. He has come to take these things and to take them out of your life and to make you feel free in Him. All we got to do is believe in Him. All we got to do is accept Him. He's God. He's, he's willing for us to come to Him, and He's willing to do the things that He said He'd do for us. He's come. That time has happened. Now here we are, 2,000 years down the road from whenever He said it, but this thing is set in order, and there's nothing can stop it. God has got it set in order. And all we got to do now is get to the place that we understand it, that it's God 
that delivers us. It's God that comes into our life. It's God that works the things in our life. And it's God that's going to give us our freedom and our liberty. And one of these days we'll stand in the presence of Him Amen. and we will be glorified through Him. Amen. I hope y'all got something out of this this morning. We are serving. I always say this. We are serving a living God. We are serving a living God. This God that I've been telling you about this morning, He's for real. It's not some figment of somebody's imagination. This God that I'm talking about this morning is one that can come into your spirit. It can come into your soul and mind, and He can control your life. If you you got to do it, just let Him do it. Amen. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's, he's an awesome God. He's like Sister Helen said that morning. He's more than awesome. Amen. He's more than awesome. He is God. Hallelujah. That makes me feel His presence. Whenever I know that He is God, it makes me feel something down inside of me that I cannot explain nobody. I can't tell you how I feel. I just know that I feel the assurance that He is God above all. I hope y'all got something out of this this morning. Remember church tonight? Remember church tonight?